everyone, Sam and Alex here for our final episode of the infield for this year. Um, we're just happy that we made it back from Nashville. Yeah, we are. I, I did not think that we were going to leave Nashville. It was the best time, the best Champions Week. Nashville put on quite a show for us, but ooh, it was a long week. It was super fun. There were events all weekend long, so we're here to take you through all of them. Yep, so let's start with Monday night, which is when most... WWE Raw! Some people got into town, but Kyle, Samantha, and Brexton got into town early for uh, Kyle to win not only his second NASCAR championship, but he took home another championship belt. Yes, this is called the 24-7 belt. Apparently, Which is a big deal. Yeah, I'm not, like, I'm just learning about the WWE, <laughs> but apparently, like, this guy, Truth, it's his belt, but then somebody can challenge him if a ref is there. So Michael Waltrip was there, and he, like, had a ref shirt on. It was a very... Which did y'all know about? This was all planned, right? Or wrestling no? is real. I don't know what you're talking about. I know, about. but, like, wrestling they, they, knew, that, they nope. knew that Kyle was coming out. No? Nope. Okay. All right. That's real. Kyle's a wrestler. Okay. Look at Brexton's face, though. Um, okay, then we also visited, you can't go to Nashville and not get hot chicken, so we went to Party Foul, which is coming up later in the episode. We're going to do a special <laughs> segment with Austin and his crew. You do not want to miss us going no. off-site out of studio. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, but this was a Bloody Mary. It's called the Brunch for Two. Uh-huh. Which, no chance Sam and I could have eaten this by ourselves. That is the first time in my life I ate a Cornish game hen. Yeah, party foul was fun. So thank you guys again. Um, but you can see everything that we ate because it was a lot of spicy chicken that yes. Sam and I had a part of. Oh, wait, and here's the part where they got to meet Kristen Cavallari and go to Uncommon James, and they purposely scheduled it no, when I was not no. available. So Because she's like my idol. So we had... One time that Kristen was available, so I'm like, great, we're going to get her. It's going to be so exciting. I text Sam, and I'm like, hey, this is when we have her be there at 8, and she's like, oh. We, have, we work for NASCAR, and let's pretend they didn't know my schedule. We special. have landmark photos, and she can't go. You yeah. told me on the red carpet you didn't, but you did. No, I totally did. Yeah. So, um, Kyle, I wanted him to go all black on black this year, and then I saw, th I knew what my dress looked like, mm -hmm. and his feather bow tie kind of reminded me of the fringe on my dress, and then we got Brexton one too. Yeah, so. y'all looked sharp. Um, I did the straight hair, then I had Merriman, who was my partner in crime, who did not wear his bolo. No. Or his cowboy hat. Said he was, goodness. chickened out. Chickened out. Um, and then another, during the awards banquet, this was really cute with you and Kyle, he did a special shout out to you, and... Yeah. It was really nice. It was really sweet. We've had a really hard year that a lot of people don't know about. We've been trying again to have a baby, and it's not working. So, um, yeah, I did not know he was going to do all of you that. You held your tears in good. You did uh, good. I, they were actually falling down. Yep. I just you had so much makeup on. It just, <laughs> just wasn't blended in. going anywhere. <laughs> um, okay, and now the, the steel of the show was uh, Brexton in the trophy. Now this is a better picture, but he li every single time that I saw him, he was either attached to one of y'all or in this trophy. All right, so now let's get into one of my favorite segments every week is the catch fence. Okay, you want to tell this story? Because <laughs> I love this story. Okay. This might be one of my highlights from Nashville. Not mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let, let me just, I'm, this is going to take a while, but I'm going to tell okay. the whole thing. All so right. obviously this was the bet that they lost in New York. Which where, we talked about on the show too. Yep, where Kyle ran and they drove and Kyle beat them. Okay, so they still owed Kyle $300. Mm -hmm. So they decided to get it in all pennies. Mm -hmm. How, wh where? Like where do you so even do that? Austin, who's Denny's guy, said yep. that they went to like 25 different banks or like Grocery store, I don't know, but... This was your hotel room um, in that, Nashville. That's what I would like to say I'm first and foremost <clears throat> mortified by is um, it was a hotel room. I'm not keeping it clean. It's like a bra was laying out, all sorts <laughs> of stuff. And um, then I, I look on social media and I'm like, oh, how many people were in our room with a like lot. crap laying around everywhere? Cameras. No yeah. Big deal. Um, so what happened was actually in between like family and team photos and then the red carpet, Brexton was getting a little tired. So I took him back to the room and I walked in and I was like, what the, not F word. Well, <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, what happened? And then I like started, you know, texting a, a bunch of like people who were there with us and um, they're like, I oh yeah. I had a panic attack. Uh, and I did have a panic attack because all I could think of, like, pennies are so dirty. <laughs> They're so dirty. And then when I realized it's on social media, and I was like, oh, my God, like, what's in the background? But the funny, I, so Merriman talked about it on the red carpet. Kyle, Kyle had no idea. Know. 
He and had so, no idea. Yeah, yet. when he blew it on the red carpet, Kyle's like, what's going on? Yeah. But then I guess Denny too was like, oh, did you see it? Well, right. while that was happening, everybody else was getting ready. Yes, yes, everybody else is getting ready. <laughs> so first we have Caitlin and Kyle. And I have to say, this was one of my favorite dresses really of pretty. the night. Um, I thought it was gorgeous. I love the slit. And I really like the shoes. Um, and then the highlight, which we talked about this on one of our first couple episodes of the infield, is Caitlin Larson is known for her shotgunning skills. And you can't have a NASCAR awards banquet without Caitlin Larson. I still want shotgunning. her to come on the show and shotgun. To, like to teach us. And I no went to chance. college and I still don't like I don't drink beer I don't drink beer either see this is where we would have a problem I know because if we shotgunned what we like actually champagne? drank we would die we have to talk about Sherry Pollux and Martin Truex Jr. too because they had quite the week in Nashville they started out at the Grand Ole Opry which I know you guys were there yep. as well that was a really fun night it was at the Ryman Auditorium which for you guys that don't know Nashville the Ryman is iconic and synonymous with country music it's where the Grand Ole Opry started uh, the Grand Ole Opry has since moved, but they have select shows come back at the Ryman every now and again. So Thank we, you for telling me all this yeah. because I got my history lessons. Yeah. I did not know all so of So we actually, it was very rare, not rare, but they don't always have the Grand Ole Opry at the Ryman. So that was like very historic for us oh. to take part in that. Oh, awesome. Good yeah. job, NASCAR. So that Sherry cool. and Martin got to go on stage. Mm. This is Ruby, Ruby, and Sherry came on the show to talk about her and their special relationship, and she was at the banquet with them, yep. and then when we left the banquet and the after party and stuff, they were actually all in the lobby together, so Kyle and I got to meet her, and she She's was so, so sweet. sweet. And um, I know their stylist, I saw her on the uh, elevator, and she was bringing up a big box for Ruby to go and pick out whatever she wanted to wear, mm. so I thought that was super cute. So... Martin and Sherry are really good friends with Cole Swindell, too, yes. who was at the awards. And Ruby actually went as his date on the red carpet. Yes. So it she was, got to be in all the pictures. She was so sweet. She like, I really see sweet. what Sherry means. I thought Cole Swindell did great on stage. But I also loved Cassidy Pope and all her outfit changes. All of her outfit changes. Well, speaking of Cassidy Pope, before she took to the awards and was the host in the red carpets and got all the craziness started, I actually caught up with her at Music City Center. All right, I'm standing here on the black carpet, but we're going to call it the red carpet for all terms sake with Cassie Pope. You're hosting the awards coming up on Thursday. Yeah. Prep, are we excited? Are we ready? Nervous? I'm all of those things. <laughs> yeah, I, we did a read through with Rutledge a little while ago, and it's going to be an awesome show. There's like a lot of great comedy, also honoring some really special people, and um, there's just going to be a little bit of roasting, which I love, and yeah, great performances as well. So it'll be great. This is the first time that NASCAR for Champions Week has been in Nashville, and I feel like for us it's a perfect fit, but you have to. I know you've been around the NASCAR circuit some and been to some races, so you have to be pretty excited that we're here in the home of country music and now we get to bring NASCAR to the city. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of a better place. I, I loved having it in Vegas. I, I had been to that one a few times and it was really fun, but I gotta say, being here where I live and having it be such a, I think country music and racing go together so well, it's such a, a perfect combination. So I, I think that the race is meant to be here. So. You wanna take this one? I do. Here's <laughs> Uncle Kurt and Auntie Ashley. Ashley, as we refer to them, um, Ashley's dress was bomb. Ashley I, looked banging. Yeah, she looked awesome. I love orange on her. I thought it was so beautiful. And, and this is Laura. I love the high-low. Me too. She was banging too. And yeah. Clint posted this photo of her with hard eyes, which is really sweet. So we come back from Nashville. Some shocking news, which I'm clapping to it. I applaud it because it was good. Yes. But very surprised is that Cole Pern is actually going to step away from NASCAR. Uh, yeah, his message what? basically said that, you know, he's on the road all the time. It's a really hard grind and he's missing his kids growing up. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Um, you know, I've said it before. Kyle and I decided to homeschool Brex so that we could travel together. It's hard. Like, yes, it looks glamorous and yes, it is glamorous. But at the end of the day, when you're some of these guys and you're gone, on the road. Thursday through Sunday, and yeah. then you work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like when the playoffs are going on, you're there putting in, what, 16-hour days? It's really hard on families. And so I agree. Much respect to him um, putting family first. It's crazy because he's at, like, the top of his game. But you yeah. know what? I don't know. It's like it's great winning all the championships and doing all that, but he's right. You can turn around and miss your kids growing up and never yeah. get that back. Um, okay, and then we're adding some more members to the garage, too, because apparently all of NASCAR has baby fever. Um, the Hemricks are having a baby. It's a little girl, Kenzie. Oh, 
announced cute. on social media. And then we have a new Keselowski. Autumn. I know, she's, she's so, so cute. She's so cute. And I just love seeing Scarlett's face and I how excited Scarlett. she is. And then this was just yesterday. Uh, Whitney and Austin uh, announced that they are also due in June, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. lots of babies coming Baby this summer. Dylan. All right, well, that's it for the catch fence. And up next, we actually got out of the studio and went on the road in Nashville. So the first stop that we had is we went to Music City Leather with Wes, who is one of, it sounds like a small select group yeah. of boot makers. And we got to visit his shop and see how you make a custom pair of cowboy boots. All right, we are here in technically Brentwood, Tennessee, right? Yes. Right outside of Nashville yes. with our friend Wes, who is the owner and custom boot maker of Music City Leather. Wes, I want to know how you got into making boots because I, I couldn't do it. We're super excited. We are excited. Um, started making boots as a hobby, and I needed something to do. Um, I used to spend all night doing paperwork for my first business, and I needed something to do, so I went out west and I learned to make cowboy boots, and... One thing led to another, and it turned into a full-time gig. All right, well, enough talking. You want to walk us through the process? Let's sure, do it. sure. What we're going to do is we're going to measure your feet. So if you can, just stand up right there. Her itty-bitty feet. What I'm going to do is take some tracings of your foot, so that way I will know where to correlate the measurements to the last. Because what I do is I'm going to take eight measurements, oh, wow. and then I transfer those measurements to the last so the boot will truly fit you the way a boot should fit you. Wow. What happens if you're, like, bloated that day? Or your calves you know, are um, or... I do have that problem sometimes. Um, and if somebody is very bloated, which in Nashville, everybody's bloated, especially in the summertime. You come down here, you eat hot chicken, you're drinking whiskey, <laughs> you show up, and your feet are just huge. Yeah. I can work around that. And I I'm only had wine last it. night. Mm -hmm. Easy. Some people call like it the one. shaft. Um, these are the ears, piping, um, and of course your top design, your heel. Uh, spur rand is a heel that sticks out further so you can let your spurs on. Um, I don't you know, know and, any your, of those. and your welt. Welt. Got this it. is your welt. And each part you can um, you can pick either any part of it you want. Okay. You know, if you want um, white piping, since you've got a white, we can go with white pipings. If you want black piping, we can go with black piping. We can do about anything you want. This is called whip stitching, and I have already welted the boot, um, and now I am whip stitching in the, um, the shank of the boot. And what I'm doing is I'm preparing it to come in and put the shank support in, which is a 40 penny nail that everybody gets. Um, I've had... That's in the bottom of everybody's boots. That's in the bottom of everybody's... And the purpose of it is? Is for arch support. Oh, because like okay. I said, the fit of the foot is from the ball to the heel. You need this arch support. And you can, a lot of manufacturers use plastic or use a thin piece of metal. I keep one of them to look at like this right here. This doesn't last in the saddle. But this right here, last in the saddle, you're not going to break it when you're um, climbing corral fences and stuff like that. And yes, it's overkill for somebody who is just walking the streets, but it doesn't matter who the boot is for, I still make it right. the same way. Awesome. Thanks so much for having us out and showing us your shop. Well, thank y'all for um, coming out. It was a pleasure. We checked the custom cowboy boots off the list. Yeah, right? this was our goal when we came out to Nashville. So thank cowboy you boots. so much. Y'all are very welcome. It's a pleasure. And you know, I look forward to seeing you in your boots. Yep, see you in a year. Yeah, yes. well, hopefully we're winning another one. Come back, grab these, Can't make another pair. Oh, yeah.
So that was pretty interesting. I didn't know that all of that went into making a custom pair of boots. And did you hear him say that they would last like 50 years? I know. He also talked about that it would take him at least a year to make a pair. I know. Which is insane. That was pretty cool though. So that was cool. after we made some boots, we were starving. We were So starving. we went over to Party Fowl and met with owner Austin, mm -hmm. where we got to try some Nashville hot chicken, Bloody Mary's, a hen, <laughs> um, bushwhacker. Yep, bushwhacker we, was Queso. Oh, okay, I forgot about the queso. The queso was good too. Yeah, I mean everything was really good, but that was, yeah. we got to dance on the bar. Like we had a great time at Party Fowl. Yep, and we kept the party going at Party Fowl, so check it out. All right, we are back at Party Fowl, which I say back because I've been here before and it is quite the party place. When I told Sam what we had to do in Nashville, the first thing I named was Nashville Hot Chicken, which Austin understands. He's the owner of Party Fowl and I want to know how you got into the hot chicken business. Well, you know, I like to drink a little bit. <laughs> and one like night while we were having a few drinks, yep, that's perfect. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine bought some brown bags over that were just greasy as hell and said, hey, I got some hot chicken. I had no idea what I was getting myself into and I uh, bit into it and it was painful. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was Bolton's and it was hot and it was really, really hot. And for some reason, even though I was sweating and I had a lot of pain, I kept wanting to keep eating. And uh, so I fell in love with hot chicken. Um, I have to interrupt you because yeah. I'm a hot chicken virgin and now I'm really scared. Like, it's <laughs> I'm not serving you in Nashville hot today. We're going to start with baby steps. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to ease into it. Just because yeah. when you're saying that, that you were like sweating. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm a little. Like little when you order buffalo wings and you order like a mild or medium, it's easy for pretty much anybody. Oh. When you order Nashville hot, mild is already hotter than buffalo. Let me also start. I've never had a chicken wing in my life. <laughs> Oh my story. gosh, I'm I know. so like, I know. this is great. You're going to do this with us for the first yeah. time. This yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing on the bone, I think, that freaks her out, but yeah. well, she's no. going to try it. She's going to love. I brought her boneless breasts for oh, the first yes. one, but the brunch for two is going to have some bones. Those are whole birds. So the first two things that are going to be coming out to you guys, uh, one of them is one of our specialties, which is a fried cheese grit cake. Oh. And uh, if you like grits, cheese, fried. I'm southern, so I'm yeah. she loves everything cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all made scratch in house. Uh, and then we're gonna bring up our hot chicken chorizo queso. So queso. Yes. <laughs> we uh, we're gonna take the queso. We actually make our own chi hot chicken chorizo, and crumble it over the top, and then we deep fry those tortilla chips in bacon fat mm. before we send them up to the table. That's so all you, girlfriend. Gluttony, gluttony, gluttony. The last piece is the piece de resistance. It is the, uh, the reason people show up here way too early on the weekend mornings. Uh, it is our brunch for two. Um, it is a two. 55, yeah, it's, it's perfect for two people or four people. I'm telling you, it's just a lot. Uh, 55 ounce Bloody Mary and a perch on top of that. We call this our Southern Fried Edible Arrangement. Uh, two whole fried Cornish game hens. All right. Yum. Oh, you might as well just hand her the queso. Like, oh, yeah, let's move down. that. Let's be honest. So this is the hot chicken chorizo queso. Oh, this these is are the, the jam, isn't it? That is the strawberry jalapeno jam. All right, well, y'all can continue talking, but I'm going to dig into my favorite thing. This is, do I have chicken in this? Chorizo. Oh. That is your hot chicken chorizo crumbled over the top. That was so good. Isn't it amazing? Because it's on your sweater. That, that might be the best. You can it for later. <laughs> the best queso I've ever had. I want to try, these are the grit cakes with the jalapeno jam. Strawberry jalapeno you want to jam. About your plate first? Okay, you guys, I love paper plates because on the motorhome, that's all we use, so at home I use them. And but they're not real. paper. Here, wait, because I'm mic'd up and this hurts their ears. Look at you can drop them, and they don't break. It hurts their ears. Can I get these somewhere? Because I, I feel like... I'll get you a link. All right, so this is the one we've been talking about. This is the grand finale. Oh, this is our brunch oh. for two. Oh my, for two. For two. Wow. So there, there are rules here, okay? So I always recommend to folks, take your pictures now. There's okay, a lot going on up here. So get your pics and then start pulling stuff apart. Throw okay. it on your plate. My kind of man, Austin. You're supposed to, Instagram's supposed to eat before you do. I love that. Right, Sam? I never hey. heard that, but I absolutely love it. I'm ready. Okay. All right, what so is this? that's your scotch eggs. Oh, okay. See, see, I'm telling you, you just got to gnaw in there. I'm excited. Well, I, so does one just like, but I can't pull one out because then the whole, the whole okay, So here's on. how I would do it. Let me break it down. Take a scotch egg each. Go ahead and take the stick. You're good. I feel like I 
should just like pull the you chicken can, out by and then, its yeah. like, like manhandle? Now you can just manhandle it, put it on your plate, and then you can rip a leg off. Do it however you like. I'm gonna get y'all some oh. big old straws for that bloody <laughs> Oh, it's leaking on me. Okay. Chicken down. Straws. Chicken down. So Heart. is this spicy? That is our mild version. I figured since you had so much else going on, the mild might be the best way to start. So these no are. This place is called Party Fowl. You have to be in a party <laughs> mood to come here. Exactly. So it. these are whole fried Cornish game hens, scotch eggs, okra. fried okra. Oh my God, who doesn't okra. love fried okra? Mm, okra. Now so we how do I eat? Pull apart a bird. Like a table one bite at a time. Oh and moly. I really got you. I usually rip the legs off first. I'm a leg guy. I mean, everyone else, you gotta get the dark meat first. There you go. I'm mean, can I knife and fork. What do you you could do that. What I would do is just put two fingers here, then rip that leg off. But I don't want the leg, I want the middle. Oh, you want to get right in there. Not okay, well, then you have it. You want to do no, it. I'm gonna saw it. Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I got it. Okay, I can handle this temperature. So good. Okay, right. Got it out. Is this. Hotter than the last, what was that one? This is mild. They're mild. The one before was medium. Now, can yeah. you order it hot? Oh, yeah. You can get this as hot as you want, or if you don't want the heat, you can order it southern fried. All right. Well, we're going to steal you and keep eating with you, but we appreciate it. This is yeah. so If you guys are ever in Nashville, party foul. Yes, you have to check it out. Come for brunch. This is only on Saturday and Sundays, this big to do, but then you guys are open every day of the week. That's right. So, party fowl is a must-see in Nashville if you're ever there. Yes, especially for brunch. Yes. No we, didn't get, we didn't get to do the Saturday and Sunday brunch, what we were really upset about, but we had, we had, some, we had on, some tastings. Yeah. From well, it. we had planned on going Friday, but then um, Thursday ran into Friday. and All the days ran in together. Ooh. Well, another must-visit part of Nashville. Are you going to be salty about this? <laughs> Let's just show the clip where Alex gets to interview my girl boss idol, Kristen Cavallari, Mine without too. me. Yeah, so we check in to Uncommon James, which the first ever location of it was in Nashville, and Kristen and her husband Jay also lived there, so we got and to she didn't even bring me earrings. We got to see her too. She promised me that she'd bring me earrings since I didn't get to go. And I forgot. So a staple here in Nashville, you have to come to Uncommon James. I'm here with Kristen Cavallari, who is the founder and CEO. Why Nashville and why Uncommon James with the name? Let's start there. Okay, well, so the name James is actually my daughter's middle name. Okay. Um, Sailor first name. Right? Sailor, yep, Sailor James. And it was my 30th birthday and I was with Jay and a bunch of my friends in Mexico and I was like, knew I was launching the jewelry line. I wanted to do something with James, but I just didn't know what. And Jay just threw out Uncommon and I was like, I like that. <laughs> so that's how the name came about. Nashville, um, this is where we live, you know, this is our hometown and so I just wanted to plant the Uncommon James roots here and be able to have everything in my hometown. For most of my career, I've had to travel to LA or New York. Yep. So it's been really nice for me to have this here where my family is. So for those that don't know your background, you're a California girl. Yeah. So being here in Nashville has to be a little different than the <laughs> West Coast, right? It is. I like it though. I think, you know, Nashville has everything that a big city has, but yet it still feels like a really small town. Mm -hmm. It does. It's just a great place to raise a family. We're actually 45 minutes outside of the city and we live on like a little mini farm, I'd say. We have chickens and, you know, my kids are outside all the time and it's just, I don't know, we just love it. It's really peaceful and calming. All right, let's show around the store because okay, cool. I want to get the, the grand tour of everything. All right, so um, typically these first two tables in the store are our new items. So over here we have a lot of our fun kind of holiday pieces. We just launched a fringe earring and it has oh, matching that. fringe uh, uh, sorry, fringe necklace with the matching fringe earrings. These are just really fun for your holiday parties yeah, and to make kind of a statement. And then Uncommon James really is timeless, effortless, refined. So the whole point. It's very classic. It is. And I just wanted a, a collection of jewelry that you could throw on with anything. I don't want you to have to think about it. I'm really <laughs> designing for the modern woman. We're busy. We yes. don't have 10 minutes every morning to try on different jewelry. So everything within each collection is going to be just that. I want you to mix and match with what you already own in your own closet. Um, so everything is very dainty and effortless. So speaking of being the modern woman, you're a mom, you're a wife. You have this. You have very cavalry on E. That's, your life has to be crazy. So how do you balance? 
the store and everything else? Um, yeah, it can be crazy at times. Honestly, just surrounding myself with great people. I couldn't do it without Jay. Um, everyone that works at Uncommon James. It has to be entertainment too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but like, I have a great team of people that work for me now, and so all of that helps. You know, I need I need to surround myself with great people so that I can do it all. Um, but yeah, between f filming, always towards the end of, of production, I get a little like, ah, oh, this is it's a lot. <laughs> do you help with the designing process? Is are you very? I know your hands on for the with jewelry everything. and everything. Yep. Everything. Yeah, wow. I do everything. Um, I have a couple girls in the office who will help me um, with different. Like I had a girl um, who did a compass for us for her necklace, which was really cool. But yeah, for the most part, I'm designing everything. Well, you did have some help with the designing. Uh, we have a men's <sighs> we have bracelet. <laughs> We've branched out into the men's world. So Jay designed a bracelet. Um, it actually comes with a bottle opener. You know, Herbert strikes, Herbert. Um, and you can twist it on and off with the bottle opener. Um, but yeah, this is, and it's doing really well. So it's been cool. We launched this just in time for the holidays. Yep. You can get it with a man cave candle, which I'll give you a little Love whiskey, that. vanilla, and leather. You know, Men's why not? Favorite things. <laughs> oh, that smells like a man. It smells, it smells like a man. So man cave. Um, yeah. So this has been really cool, and it's doing well, and we had fun doing it together. It will be a semi storyline on season three. Um, so everyone can kind of see that process. So we might do more. I know we'll the see. the fun joke that he likes to say all the time is that he like owns this yeah. too. He's CEO. Yeah. So he it was nice for him to have a little touch. There you go. He gets it. All right, keep going. <laughs> There's more. Um, all right, so let's see what else is over here. So one of our uh, best sellers is a tocha, um, and it comes oh, in three different one. sizes. Coins are really trendy, really popular right now. Um, so this is our small one, which I'm actually obsessed with. We have a medium size one and then the large one. So again, everything you know, super effortless, but we. Also, do pay attention to the trends, signet rings, coins, yep. um, geometric hoops, coins are all huge. of that stuff. Yeah, Everything they're, they're everywhere right, right now. So, you can get that with us as well. So, not only jewelry, you branched out into home goods. Yeah. You are a chef with a cookbook. <laughs> now. Chef is no, no, I'm, I'm a cook, I'm hardly a chef. <laughs> you are. Um, and then we also have clothing line with yeah. Little James clothing. Yeah, so Little James is honestly the first thing I've done that my kids actually care about um, because they're, <laughs> they're involved, they're the fit models. So, I fit all of the clothes to them. And kids are great because they will will give you their honest opinion, mm -hmm. even if it's brutally honest. Yep. So I do ask their opinion on everything, and if they don't like it, I don't do it, because I really wanted a line that marries both what mom and dad want their kids to wear with what kids actually want to wear, because usually it's one or the other. Yep. So yeah, this is really, it's really fun for me. It truly is just a passion project of mine that is fun to get my kids involved with. But same kind of thing, you know, I mean, trendy, yet timeless, um, and all just still effortless pieces. That's just sort of my whole vibe all around. And still keeping with the James theme. So it has the, it ties into there the jewelry go. brand James as well. James all the way around. Now you have three kids at home? Three kids. Two boys, right? Two boys and a girl, yeah. So I know that a big story of yours too is that you like to keep them faces wise off of social media yeah. and away from the public. Yes. Why is that for moms? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like, um, you know, they may grow up and not want to be on social media. I don't want to rob them of that decision. They shouldn't want to be sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I just want to keep them kids right now. They're seven, five, and four. Let's keep them seven, five, and four. Yeah. They don't need their picture blasted all over the internet. Um, and so I just want to give them that opportunity to make that decision on their own. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Um, it. Social media is a tough place, especially when you're younger. I don't know how people do it these yeah. days. Yeah, I mean, I just can't even imagine if someone were to say something neg Well, people have said negative things about my kids, but I think like if it was a, based on their appearance or something, I would get so crazy and yeah. like Mama Bear would come out and I would, it's, so I just, I'm like, I'm just gonna leave them off, you know? So in the works now for Uncommon James, what do we have coming up next? There's one in Chicago, yes. pop up in LA. Yeah, so we just opened doors in Chicago, which was awesome. Um, potentially looking at Dallas for the next store. It's a good location. Yeah, um, and then we are launching uh, Vermeil. So everything will be 14 karat gold plated um, sterling silver. And they will be very classic, just timeless pieces. Um, so it's for the woman who just wants pieces that are gonna last her forever. Yep. So that we're gonna be launching in uh, fall 2020. And then so, we have another. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, if you don't have enough so going fast. <laughs> um, And then we are partnering with another big company um, to do a curated collection of something in the spring, which I don't want to give away just yet. Okay. But it'll be good. But we'll see on your social media. And You'll see it all going. over. Yeah. Um, so before I let you go, though, we have to mention the NASCAR awards that you're presenting at. Yes. It's going to be you and Jay. Yep, Jay so and I are presenting. You together. guys are introducing the fourth Denny? place driver, Denny yes. Hamlin. Yes. yes. So. Okay. 
ever been to a NASCAR race? Any part of racing? No, but Jay is obsessed with it. And he, oh, yes. they do like a celebrity, they used to do a celebrity race and he always wanted to do it, but he was always playing football. Can we start that? Can I know, that? so let's go. He would be, he would probably be really good because yeah. he basically is a race car driver on yep. the road every day. So well, thank you for letting us see the store. This was great. Thank you um, if you're ever in Nashville or Chicago or LA, all her locations, yeah. <laughs> visit Uncommon James. You can also buy all these pieces on uncommonjames.com. Yep, exactly. And then you can look for Kristen and Jay on season three of Very Cavalry. What's the date? January 9th. January 9th. Thursday night. So that was really fun. Um, we've talked about That's the really awards. Fun. We've talked about all the photos. <laughs> we've talked about all the shoots. But you know, the real party doesn't start until the after party. Oh, yeah. And Kyle's after party was a heck of a party. Yeah, so when we were trying to plan it, I said, all right, we're going to be doing country for a few days. A few, it was about like a year. We need, you know, a party party. So um, first we had the downtown band, and they were this awesome cover band that played like all today's hits mm -hmm. and the older stuff. It was super fun. And then we had Nelly come out. Which, if you know any of us. It was epic. It was just a bunch of like NASCAR homies chilling with Nelly and we it was were, the like, coolest. We sang every it single really word. Cool. We, we danced did. nonstop. I'm sure you could see in the video, um, there's me and Ashley and Brandy in the background just literally living our best lives. And so Kyle. The best part, so this is my spot. This is the video that I took. So I, Nelly, I could reach out and touch Nelly. So occasionally. Did you try? a couple times I also he also had something in his cup that he was like kept offering to people and people would be like yeah and I was like I we, mean we know if <laughs> Nelly, he doesn't have germs <laughs> um, but Sam would occasionally it was really funny she would occasionally like point to me be like hey and, like we would do a little thing do like a really drunk girl yeah. like hey girl <laughs> it's really fun but the money gun which Kyle Busch pulled out money. of nowhere yeah we're way too cheap for real money so it's <laughs> no you're not because I am like, oh, cool, I'll pick up a souvenir and I'll bring it back to the infield. And I can say that this was part of Kyle Busch's after party. Well, it has his face on it, y'all. Kyle, so money. It, like, I picked it up and I was like, that's, it's Kyle's face. Yeah, sure is. But, yeah. You frame that. Money gun. Here you go. Um, so our final victory lane segment <laughs> of the season, which I get to, I get to set it up and choose sure. who the victory lane is. I don't know if this is fair or not, but my victory lane goes to Samantha Bush because after partying, <laughs> taking photos, doing all of her responsibilities all week long, after the after party, so the after, 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 after party. Well, because Monster had an after party, so that was the after party yep. that we had once so is the yep. after, after party. Yep. So now it's the after, 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 after party. party. Um, she got a tattoo, ladies and gentlemen. I wasn't the only one. There was a group of us, along with Kyle, who got a yeah. tattoo. Um, you came up at the after party at Kyle's and asked me, do you think that's a good idea? And I was like, go for it, girl. Yeah. The driver was like, um, we probably shouldn't go to this part of town. And we're like, no, it's fine. Like, like we know Nashville. Like, just, just go. Um, so we get there and we find out that um, one of the DJs that they found at the bar, it was his buddy. Um, so this is the reputable <laughs> artist that we found. And we went to his house after apparently they woke him up and um, oh. a hairless cat greeted us at the door um, along with a mini Dr. Evil. So that's where the hairless cat so oh. you get it. So oh. that all tied in. Um, oh wow, it's a themed tattoo parlor. Oh, it wasn't tattoo parlor, it was his house. We, oh, we literally damn. woke him up to get oh. tattoos. Oh gosh. And um Are you an iguana? He told me there an was, iguana. There was a really cool tank with an iguana and that was that was neat. And then there was another tank on the floor which I um snake or tarantula, I'm not sure, didn't didn't want to. But the the gentleman who did the tattoos was fabulous. He was very nice. He opened up his house to us at three in the morning and let a bunch of totally sober idiots. Yeah. Um hang out and he nicely gave us tattoos and so um i got it's i don't know if you can see it should i just walk up to the camera i don't know okay. how this is i don't know work. how this is gonna work but like if you could see this on my finger no can you're you not this? close not close where there is, you go where, oh, wait, <laughs> wait hang on i can see myself now now i know where it's at can you see this <laughs> wait <laughs> do you see it or no it's hard to which way you can go? see it come on back there we go see? yeah okay um so, going along <laughs> with Kyle's speech, it is, um, those were our two baby girls that we don't have, and so, um, it's a cross and a heart, and actually that lovely DJ, who I, 
we still don't know his name. <laughs> he, he drew it for me at 4.30 in the morning. Um, so the DJ drew it, not the tattoo artist? Nope. He was busy tattooing. Kyle got his first tattoo. Um, oh, Kyle got one too. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, there was probably about eight of us that got tattoos. And then we felt bad that it was now like 5.45 in the morning. And so the other people opted out. And then we went to breakfast. And I just, I, it's a stranger's home and you getting a tattoo. Yeah, just the it. whole thing about it is really. But the guy was really nice. I mean, he nicely, he got up and. This might be the most deserving victory lane of all. Is that you got a, got a tattoo in a house with and an iguana and a hairless cat. And the best part was, as I'm getting a tattoo, there's just like a hairless cat on my feet. And, like, <laughs> and by the time I got back, it was pretty close to seven. And um, I was like, well, Brex, he was in the room attached to us. Um, so I was like, well, they're going to be up in like an hour. So there's no point in going to sleep. So yeah. we uh, high hightailed at home and yep. um, spent the next two days recovering. Well, speaking of the party being over. Yeah, our party's, party's over. over. This is the last episode for the year. Yeah, we got to end it with a bang in Nashville, which was really fun. Thank you guys for following along with us all season long. All of our bloopers. All of our bloopers. <laughs> Talking with Sam and I on social media, we have loved hearing from you guys and loved the infield fans. Yeah. You guys have been so sweet. And thank you to all of our guests too that came out and kind of told us a little bit more about the behind the scenes of their lives and you know I thought that was really cool. I felt like I learned a lot and thank you guys. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Take care.